Hello everybody, my name is Jose Ramirez and my presentation today is Graffiti is a Culture. My selected culture topic is graffiti. Now, if you live in Houston, chances are you've probably seen this mural. This mural was done by a graffiti artist by the name of Gonzo 247. Gonzo 247 has been painting graffiti in Houston for over 20 years. He was one of the trendsetters and pioneers in Houston. Also, you've probably seen this one as well, the Be Someone Bridge. Now, there's been a lot of talk of people trying to make this bridge a national landmark, but Be Someone is also a graffiti artist. You've probably never seen one of these, but this isn't as commercial. This holds a little more true to the graffiti art standards as it pertains to graffiti. Now, one of the things I covered in my paper was that graffiti encompasses all the elements of topography. There is a lot of technical knowledge and know-how when it comes to graffiti. Looking at this, you might not be able to read it. You might not even know what it is exactly. But what you're looking at is a sketch, an outline of graffiti. Now, there are some things we need to talk about. A lot of people say, oh, you tag. Tags are sloppy letters. There's no form or consistency. It's a lot of tagging is, is associated with gang activity, just vandalism. Tagging is not part of graffiti culture. It is, it is basically a perversion of graffiti culture. Now, what you'll see is that in graffiti, we, we consider what you guys, what the general public would call tags as scribbles. Now, scribbles are signatures. They're signatures that have more style to them. They have a lot of flow. We don't say tag. We say they're scribble or their signature, but typically graffiti artists will speak in, in the culture and say that it's a scribble. Now, after a scribble, let's say someone is beginning to come into the graffiti culture. They begin with their scribble, their style, their signature, their moniker. They all have code names, which could be nicknames. Um, what I'm showing you here is Bates. This is a graffiti artist from the UK who goes by the name of Bates. Now, in my paper, I covered that there's many forms of graffiti art and how it, how it evolves. One of the ways it evolves is that you go from scribbling to bubble letters, or we call them bombing letters. The reason they're called bubble letters and bombing letters is because these are the type of letters you can paint on a wall very quickly, or you can paint them on a train very quickly. You can fill them in, and you can be in and out in, in minutes, and sometimes even seconds. Um, the third uh, evolution when it comes to graffiti is from your, from your scribbles to your bubble letters, and now you have block letters. Block letters are typically bigger. They have more form. They're a little more geometric sometimes. And the purpose of these block letters is for you to make a huge statement on your wall. Whether it's a train, a wall, a billboard, the, the block letters, you begin to develop your individual, individualized style of lettering. So, and that's very important in the graffiti culture because it's all about style. If you don't have style or creativity or even um, the courage to try and experiment and to do different things, you're not going to earn the respect of your fellow graffiti artists. You'll never push your art and yourself and you'll never find your identity as an artist. And then lastly, one of the things that you will master and that's part of the graffiti culture is the burners, the pieces. We call them pieces, they're called burners. And what those are, they're very intricate, um, intertwined letters that really flow well together. They have a lot of color theory. Color is so important, the way you utilize the space. And if, I don't know if you've noticed, but every scribble, bubble letter, block letter, and now burner is all the same person. The artist Bates. So Bates has mastered his craft. He knows how to do everything. But before Bates was um, 
to the status where he's at now, he was an amateur. In the graffiti culture, we call them toys. When you're a toy, that means you're unskilled, your craftsmanship is lacking, your creativity is lacking. So a lot of people will come up with a really cool name and they'll start painting. And it's very unevolved. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do. But with time and with diligence, you're able to elevate your graffiti know-how and your craftsmanship into doing burners and pieces. So this is so important because what I'm showing you is a piece that was painted by Zeus and then seven years later he, he's still writing his name and he has elevated his game. His experience, his creativity, and his know-how has gotten him very far. So in the graffiti culture it's all about what you're producing. If you're producing good work, creative work, stylish work, you will earn the respect of your fellow graffiti artists. I mean, the general public only sees what the finished product. They don't know the process. They don't know the time it took for you to think something out. So when you're doing things and you're producing public works of art, it has to be good. If it's sloppy, if it's ugly, people won't like it. People won't respect it. But most importantly, You'll, you'll never really refine your style if you don't really push the boundaries and try to meet the standards that have already been set. There's a lot of great graffiti in Houston. Um, there's a lot of great graffiti artists in Houston. And in this culture project paper, I hope to shed light some of the misconceptions that graffiti isn't gang related and for you to know the difference between tagging and scribbles and what graffiti art is, because tagging is vandalism, it's um, criminal activity, it can be gang associated, but graffiti art is about promoting their name. And their name tells a story. The story is, I was here, remember me. Thank you for your time, I hope you enjoyed it.